Well, a very warm welcome to our audience today. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, my name is Monica Visconti Patel. I am from Automation Anywhere. I will be your top of the presentation host and the bottom of your presentation host. And I want to thank you time with us today. So if ERP and RPA is what you're after today, then you are in the right place. This is the webinar titled How to Future-Proof Your ERP Applications with Intelligent Automation. We have a great panel of speakers at our disposal today. Uh, the first two speakers coming from Automation Anywhere and JK Tech, your core hosts will be Surreal Milin uh, from Automation Anywhere, our, our, our RPA host uh, and advisor, and Ram Kumar from JK Tech, who comes from a very rich and robust background of, of, of process methodology and implementation frameworks. But most importantly, um, what everyone here is here to hear is uh, Adam Ford, who was our esteemed guest speaker today, who is going to share with you some advice, some tips and tricks, and tell you how COVID gifted him with more than just one job role. So with that, I would encourage you that if you do have questions for our speakers today, um, this may be a, a slightly new uh, user interface for you, but over to the right-hand side of your slide or the slides uh, that you're presented with, you will see a little pop-up window and there will be a question mark. Please do ask our, our, our panelists some questions today. We will do our best to answer those questions during the live event, but it is likely that we will save everything until the end where we will have an open Q&A. So enjoy yourselves. You're about ready to hear some fantastic stories about um, innovation, hyper automation, and um, yes, the TAF implementation framework. Surreal, I am going to, without further delay, hand the slides over to you, my friend. Good luck. Thank you, Monica. And uh, yeah, as, as, as you said, let's try to define about some, some content and what is exactly hyper auto automation or some, sometimes we call it intelligent automation. So, well, this is finally a virtual circle which started a while ago now with the automation. So that's, that's the first state, the first stage, automation, well, also called RPA, which will finally cover basic tasks. So the overall idea here is to re reproduce basic tasks with uh, what human can do, so, such as, for example, copy paste. That's a good start, but finally, if you, you still need to go forward and introduce some intelligence to understand the data, and that's the second step. This is the digitization step, where you will be able to define and understand, or the platform will be able to, to understand what is the data, what are we talking about, what is the document type, for example, or what is the email uh, meaning, what this email means, for example, also. So that's, well, the second pillar of this uh, intelligent automation, of intelligent automation. So now you are able to process more, but that means also that you will have to manage more exceptions. And that's the third step, the third stage, finally, of intelligent automation is, that, okay, we, you need to, uh, to, to interact, to decide quickly what is the decision, what is the, uh, well, finally, the data to, to validate, et cetera. So that's the third stage of uh, intelligent automation. And then, last but not least, because here you are able now to produce more, you are able to automate more. Uh, what is also critical is to be able to discover more. Okay, And this is where also uh, an intelligent automation platform will require to be able to discover more processes by, for example, and this is what we do at Automation Anywhere, including the business user doing this. So this is an overview about intelligent automation. But then finally, what does that mean for when you have an ERP? Uh, we can say there are three main challenges. The first one is the, the eclectic sources. Uh, well, an ERP is supposed to be the central place to get all the data. But finally, you still need to uh, grab data from a CRM, from a legacy system, um, well, from an Excel file, because at the end, it's always an Excel file. And, to, and put it in your ERP or send the data to this Excel file. That's the first, uh, the first challenge, and this is where uh, automation can help. The second one is the finally the ERP users are skilled people most of the time, and they are spending a lot of time to 
copy-paste data, which is not that, uh, well, their main, let's say, skill. Uh, so the idea is to, well, it will help to manage your ROI pressure uh, by avoiding the repetitive task and focusing the people on their main, their core business. And then the third point is also very important is, well, the automation will offer, offer also the capacity to collaborate finally between teams. ERP are most of the time used by uh, back office, uh, back office um, departments, but they still need to communicate with the front office. So the overall idea to automate this is to facilitate the communication between the different teams, front office and back office. So what does that mean in the, in the reality? So that's, uh, let me share my screen. I will share a common use case. We are delivering at Automation Anywhere with our platform, which is uh, the, well, a process, a sales process order to cash. It's the sales order process, okay? So if we look at sales orders, finally, we have some different sources and we need to get the data. I hope Surreal? you see my screen. No, uh, we're, not, we're not seeing your screen. I'm sorry okay, to interrupt good. you. Yes, could we try that again? Oh, perfect. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. I will try it and I will also, up. just coming back to this. Okay, so then, then you can see, right? Yes, we can now see that. Thank you for so correcting the, that. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so the first stage is to collect the data finally, okay? And uh, that's very repetitive. We know where are the sources. It could be a website, it could be an email. That's the first step. This is RPA finally. But then the data itself, you have to understand it. And that's the second part, the intelligence part. That's where you have to understand this is first a PO. And second, where is the data located? For example, the material number or the bill to or the ship to. You have extracted, extracted the data. The, now the data is structured again, and you can enter it in different systems in your ERP, of course. So in this case, this is SAP, as a user would do. Okay. So the, the overall idea of the platform and the intelligent automation is to copy paste finally the, the, the data, structure it and copy paste. But that's the happy pass, I would say. That's a, we just copy paste, but finally we, know, we all know that in real life you have to manage exceptions. And this is also important if you want to accelerate your, your process to be able to do this. So for this use case, for example, we have a material number which is not existing, okay? So the idea is to automate the contact. So the, the customer contact will be, uh, will be notified. It will be invited to correct or check the issue at, at the beginning and it will be helped also in the in the correction. So the idea is, well, the sales order will be presented and some options will be also uh, presented to the, the contact center per person and he will select what is the best option. So then finally, well, once it's done, it will be, the document will be able to be sent as it is by collaborating finally with the, uh, the users and the bots and getting all the data, okay? So that's the end of the process, but uh, you also want to know if the data is relevant. And that's the last stage is the, okay, I want to analyze what my sales orders, if they are efficient or whatever the process is finally. So that's, I would say an overview about uh, the, 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 what we can do at Automation Anywhere, okay? This is one use case. There are many more, of course. This is a, not an exhaustive list of use case, of course. Uh, so I will now hand things to, uh, to Ram uh, from GK Tech, one of our established partner. He will illustrate the intelligent automation framework. So GK Tech has developed a lot of uh, intelligent automation uh, framework. And well, Ram, over to you. Thanks, Cyril. Uh, I'll start by, by, by giving you an introduction of JK Tech. Uh, JK Tech has been delivering a business and technology services, which includes ERP services to global enterprise clients for past 25 years. One of our customers, uh, Adam Ford, is there on the call with us. We are serving our global customers in US, UK, Europe, and India with an on-site and offshore delivery model. Oh. Over the last several years, we have built a strong automation practice working with partners like Automation Anywhere. As you can see from the slide, we have delivered 800 plus bots 
to more than 30 plus global customers. We have also delivered value for customers across business processes like operations, compliance and audit, FNDA and IT. Just to share with you an example, for a global paint manufacturer, due to sudden surge in demand, they had to buy expensive raw material at short notice from unauthorized suppliers. We built a bot for them that checked the demand and stock supply. In case of shortages, it will also notify if the stocks are available in nearby plants within 200 kilometers. This resulted in reduction of raw material procurement by 70% for the customer. JK Tech key differentiators are automation is not just about technology, but customer's business process. Tailored approach for each customer, accelerators, domain knowledge, and pre-built industry solution, certified and trained practitioners. JK Tech has also embarked JK Tech has also embarked on the intelligent automation, hyper automation framework. As Cyril has explained, I just want to reiterate a few key points. Intelligent automation is about looking at the end to end business process rather than a task. Holistic approach of business process transformation with a collaborative convergence of technologies. COVID has accelerated digital transformation. The process of digitization is irreversible. Digitization requires complete front-end and back-end automation. It's not just about efficiency, but competitive and advantage. As per Gartner, this is one of the top 10 technology trends uh, for 2021 and beyond. I just want to read it, the key components of intelligent automation. The first component is process discovery and mining. Discover your process cognitively and identify bottlenecks. Intelligent business process management, business rules, and workflow. If you recall, Cyril had showed in the demo workflows and business rules. Third component, RPA, uh, which we all know. Data analytics, AI, ML, are also very critical. You leverage your past knowledge of processes from data and leverage AI, ML, so that machines can perform some of the complex tasks. No code, no code. Citizen development deployment. So it is easy to deploy. And more importantly, once the base environment is set up, business can leverage drag and drop to define workflows and change business rules. Enterprise connectors, very critical. Cyril had explained about integrating front end, back end CRM on all applications. So we have already built in 200 connectors in our platform. And we are also building connectors to other applications in our, in our framework. So I will now explain uh, with an example how we can leverage intelligent automation to transform the process and reduce human intervention. This is the proce process flow of a customer return for a retail customer. Customer has initiated a product return via web or call center. The request is validated. For simplicity purposes, we have defined a scenario where the return is accepted. After customer returns the material, the material is reviewed and the material is received and stock level adjusted. Based on customer preference, a credit note is initiated or the product is replaced with same or similar product. Replacement is then shipped. We are showing you an example of a retail scenario, but this can be applicable for any customer, right? Even if you, you make maybe scientific instruments, right? As we embark on intelligent automation journey, critical first step is to cognitively discover process and discover gaps that are causing delays in the process. All the areas shown in green color are process variants which cause delay to the process. Now we will see how we can leverage intelligent automation to enhance speedy execution, reduce manual intervention, reduce cost and enhance customer satisfaction. The first process, uh, the first component, leverage conversational AI and chatbot to get information from customer from multiple sources. So earlier you had only two sources, now you can get it from multiple sources and also in the end notify the customer. Second component, leverage RPA to enter customer stocks, uh, to enter request from the customer directly into system, adjust your stock level, issue credit note for customer and notify customer. The third critical process, 
workflows and business rules to validate customer request to update to accept or reject the material <clears throat> now aiml also becomes oh, well, okay uh, just a minute sorry i think yeah just give me one minute here yeah. Uh, can you all see my screen? Hello. Yeah. Yes, we can. Uh, We're good. AIML. Uh, so I just uh, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, go through the yeah. I was still here. Where we will leverage AIML to do analysis of returned material, recommend replacement products. In this example, we are also showing integration with partners ecosystem. We are showing a simple example. We are also not showing data layer uh, for simplicity because this your AIML has to integrate with your data, uh, with the backend data, the data lake or data system. Now, and this is what your end-to-end -end AIA platform looks like. All tools at one place. 200 plus connectors, RPA, AIML, and data analytics. No code, low code, which is easy to set up, as, as we had discussed. More import, most importantly, it is also a complementary, non-intrusive platform. You do not have to change your architecture to a great extent, and you can leverage your existing tool set. Based on this example, I will request you to all mentally Visualize your respective processes and how intelligent automation can transform your business. Now, with our experience of working with multiple customers, we have also evolved a well-defined five-step client engagement model to take customers in their automation journey. The steps involved are discovery, assessment, strategize, deliver and realize value. Discover, assess, and strategize are more important. The timelines mentioned here are indicative. It will depend on number of processes uh, and other things. For a successful intelligent automation journey, it is critical to discover process that can be automated, do a proper ROI assessment of the critical processes that can be automated, involve business process, business and an IT. Automation projects fail uh, due to lack of coordination between business processes and IT, starting off with complex process with less ROI. I'm articulating with an example uh, of, uh, of our engagement model with a huge feed flow. We went across four areas of finance, HR, IT, supply chain. Uh, we went across four areas, finance, HR, IT, and supply chain. First step in the discovery phase, we went across these functions and identify 28 processes that can be automated. In the assessment phase, we then defined optimal process uh, where, where, where these, if there can be changes made to the process or, or if they were working at an optimal uh, uh, best practice model. In the strategy, we then prioritized the processes into a medium, uh, high, and low. We then defined 21 processes uh, that can that can go through uh, that, that that are the uh, that are the uh, 21 processes that should go through the automation roadmap. And so far, we have delivered 10 process. The most critical is is the strategize phase. You we defined an ROI that you will you can save up to two million pound in saving per year. These 21 processes, if defined. Uh, if we go through the process, you will result in 85% productivity and 70% cost optimization. And in the value realization phase, the 10 process that we have automated, we also then map it uh, with the uh, with the discovery phase or strategize phase, uh, whether these processes are uh, re re leveraging that benefit that we have uh, suggested. Now, as I've explained, JK Tech's intelligent automation framework and our life cycle, life cycle engagement model I will bring in my colleague Sangamitra, who will talk specifically about FNDA process in more detail and explain how we can leverage intelligent automation and ERP to transform the program. Sangamitra, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Ram, uh, for briefing on the intelligent automation framework. Uh, so as Ram has mentioned, I would like to give an overview of how and in what all the various ERP business processes, intelligent automation can be leveraged to embrace the next generation digital transformation and to modernize the ERP systems. 
And as Ram has already highlighted, as the RP is vast, including its module in SCM, CRM, HR, operations, sales and procurement, and in all these modules, we can definitely see a plethora of automation opportunities. But we have chosen finance and accounting for this, uh, for this webinar to talk through because it's a common module across any industry. Uh, within f &E itself, if you see, be it under procure to pay, order to cash, record to report, or in uh, financial processing and uh, planning and analysis, that there are a lot of, uh, of automation opportunities. Examples include the one that Cyril has already showed, uh, right, on um, sales order creation. There can be creation and updation of vendor profiles and material information, uh, invoice processing, master data upload, reconciliation of customers and vendor statements, um, then you can have um, account receivables and account payable uh, reporting, and then the list will just go on. As we can see in this diagram also, starting for the source to pay process flow, starting from spend analytics, till the payment processing, there are multiple options to implement intelligent automation to streamline the repetitive high volume and mundane task. So in the next slide, I would like to give some examples of uh, the use cases within f &E that we in JKT have implemented automation solutions for our esteem customers. Uh, month and closer activity is uh, one of the automations that we did for a beverage manufacturer that involved complex calculations of accruals and prepayment processing. Uh, across different GL and cost centers, followed by posting them in ERP systems. When done manually, it was taking almost a week's effort to complete the entire process. But post automation, it was done in less than two days, saving around 70% of the effort and improving accuracy by around 30%, as there was no scope for human errors. Uh, the other one is on the KPI dashboard automation that we did for a global uh, FMCG player, where we automated 300 plus reports related to gross profit, turnover, material cost, business waste, etc., uh, which involved huge data coming from 13 different systems for 200 plus different products. And employees were working in shifts, shifts to uh, generate various reports, which was taking on an average around 42 hours uh, per report. And with automation, it was reduced to 17 man hours per hour, which helped the company not only gain the efficiency benefit, but also save around 12,000 worth of uh, manual hours in an annual basis. Uh, another example would be uh, the vendor selection process automation that we did for a US-based uh, doors and windows manufacturer where criteria like industry experience, price, payment adherence, adherence to delivery quality um, and safety standards were evaluated, for which FTs were spending hours with this automation. And after automation of the process, uh, this process was becoming eight times efficient than it, was, it used to be earlier. We also did account receivables process uh, automation for one of our um, real estate clients, then there was a bank reconciliation that we did where uh, chalans from various different banks were coming for their, for the customers, different vendors that are coming through, and then bot has to pick up all those relevant information that are coming from the bank chalans and then verify it across other different uh, documents and then uh, the data that is saved under the ERP system and then automated. Um, Another example would be the monthly journal entry posting, uh, also that in finance automation we have covered uh, for as one of our automation solutions uh, to our customers. So as we have seen, there are a lot of uh, benefits right, that automation provides. And it is not only limited to your efficiency gain and productivity gain or um, reducing the risk of operational cost it also helps you improve your customer satisfaction as well as uh, increase your employees' morale because they can then invest their time not in doing the repetitive mundane work, but in doing the strategic high value work. Um, and uh, here also, if you see this slide talks about the different benefits, be it in terms of efficient manufacturing, then analytics, driven data for better decision making that automation can be leveraged 
getting 100% visibility across the company for their supply chain and making their logistic intelligent by automating the shipment and vehicle tracking. It also enables growth of companies with no extra cost by having bots work as your digital workforce and help increase the revenue and cash flow. One more important benefit that I would like to highlight here is uh, because automation helps you track end-to-end -end audit trails and helps meeting the compliance, compliance and regulation controls, which otherwise is a very humongous task for auditors. Automation also empowers organizations, IT and operations as well. And I would like to invite my colleague NVS, who will demonstrate the same with our JKT's test automation framework. NVS, over to you. Thank you, Sangamitra, for presenting the benefits of IISO lucidly. Here, I would like to talk to you about the test automation framework. Why is this test automation framework is required? We all know that software development need to be tested before deployment on the production system. In order to sustain the gains made in development using intelligent automation, we need to employ a method which is different from traditional verification and validation approach. So how do we optimize the verification and validation effort? By using TAF, the test automation framework developed by JKT. The framework helps create test scenarios for complete workflows cutting across all the interface touch points using RPA tools. It does not use transactional test case approach as is in Vo, used by multitude of automation tools that are available in the market. Now, is that all? There is much more to this framework. It can be used in different testing phases, component integration, SIT, regression, UAT. It is also tool agnostic, available on multiple RPA tools, including Automation Anywhere, and is future-proof to adopt newer automation tools. It is browser agnostic. It can run on any browser. It is user interface agnostic. It is available on character user interface, GUI, and web. It can be hosted both on-prem and on cloud. And what do we offer to our clients? 33% assured productivity gains across different testing phases. That's very, uh, very important benefit that we give to our customers. Then 200 plus pre-built standard workflow test scenarios built on various ERPs like SAP, QAD, and progress applications. Minimal coding and customization required when we are deploying from one client to another client, less than 5% of the coding or customization that is required. It's a very short duration deployment. We will take about two weeks of lead time to deploy and run this particular framework and run the testing for the clients. And we will be happy to engage with you in continuing this discussion. Now, Ram will now take over and discuss the next steps. Over to you, Ram. Thank you. Okay, so thank you guys for that. Ram, I'm hoping that you haven't walked away from our presentation oh, no, here. We can't hear you. All right, I'm it's, there, it's over there. to you, I, my I, friend. I, yeah, I, I was on mute. Uh, All yeah. right, there yeah. we go. So, thank you, NBS. I have the pleasure of introducing our uh, guest speaker, Adam Ford, Group CIO of Spectrus, uh, PLC and CIO of Malvern Panalytical. Welcome to you, Adam. Thank you very much for having me, Ram. Adam, uh, you know, whenever I speak to you, uh, so would you start by telling us about your business and current roles as you carry two job titles and 60 hours week, working week? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so, hi, everybody, and, and thanks for joining. Uh, Spectrus is a, we're a high-tech precision management group of companies. Uh, we, we, our, our mission is to help our customers um, deliver a cleaner, healthier, and more productive world, as you can see on screen. And specifically, Malvern Panalytical, which is our largest operating company, is really focused around high-tech analytical solutions to help our customers understand the, the kind of the characteristics of a wide range of materials using technologies like laser diffraction, X-ray uh, fluorescence and, and stuff like that. 
I've been a CIO of Spectrus, Chief Information Officer, in case the acronym isn't familiar to you, um, for the last two and a half years. And about 12 months ago, uh, the president of Malvern Panalytical reached out to me and asked if I would come and, and uh, help at Malvern Panalytical and, and provide some, some technology leadership. This was right at the time where the pandemic was beginning. And um, in my mind, I thought, well, having two jobs is probably a good idea when you're going into a pandemic. Um, so I said yes. And, and I've sort of got a, a mandate to help accelerate digital transformation, supporting our products, customers, employees, and operations, whilst also strengthening our control and cybersecurity environments and effectively provide strategic leadership across technology. Okay. Clear. Thanks, Adam. And uh, well, last year, as you said, we faced a very interesting period, the COVID. Uh, and uh, well, could you share with our audience the impact of it and how it has placed your business, uh, the changes you have you've had to uh, to manage, and well, maybe more safely for us, it's a whole RPA uh, fit into your strategy and uh, your vision. Yeah, absolutely, Cyril. And, and I'd just like to start by saying um, right now, it feels for many of us as though the pandemic is over. Um, clearly, we're all very concerned about what's happening in India. I have friends and colleagues there and, you know, they're very much in our thoughts at the moment. Um, and, and that leads me into where our entire focus has been throughout the pandemic. And I'm sure everyone on the call has had the same focus, which is on the, the well-being and welfare of our people. Um, the immediate impact for us was probably quite similar to many companies. We had to quickly make a transition to remote working for many of our, our teams. Um, we were fortunate that we had the technology and the capabilities to do that with, with minimal business interruption. The, the next impact was on our manufacturing sites. So how do we maintain those? And many of our of our, our operating companies, including Malvern Panalytical, are actually considered critical infrastructure because we're part of the vaccine effort or we make uh, equipment for ventilators, stuff like that. Um, so we had to keep our factories open. So we, we did what I'm sure many people did initially, which was kind of create blue-green teams, start creating social distancing rules, new policies, procedures, introduce mask wearing, you know, managed occupancy in offices very tightly, and more recently have introduced lateral flow testing. So I'm sure very, very familiar to everybody. The second big impact was to our customers and, and to our relationships with our customers, because where previously we'd go to exhibitions, we had to create webinars. Where previously we would physically install equipment, we had to figure out how to create virtual install capabilities. And where previously we would turn up in person to service an instrument, we had to use augmented reality to be able to work with the customer and do remote servicing. So the kind of customer shift to digital, just like the employee shift was, was significantly accelerated. Then of course, the next impact was on the supply chain because the various lockdowns meant it was more difficult for us to deliver. Um, and our customers, we, we don't recognize all of our revenue until we've actually delivered and installed our equipment. So we had to keep a really close eye on forecasting and what the impact of these lockdowns would be and whilst at the same time managing our inventory and working capital so that was the sort of the, the next piece and that led us to develop a lot of enhanced forecasting solutions and, and start to really get a we already had a great understanding of our business but I, but I think we took it to the next level overall like many many companies um, we were impacted from a revenue perspective we have customers in academia and automotive and, and, and we, you know, we all understand the impacts there. And so as a result, we, um, we had to uh, take some tough decisions um, and we had to resize our business to cope with the reduced volume of sales. And, and, you know, and, and, and often that involved restructuring, which, which is always a last resort, sometimes necessary. We're now in a position where, We've introduced all these new digital capabilities and our business is growing again. You know, and we've, we feel optimistic about the future. We, as I said at the beginning, we know COVID isn't over, but we feel we're, we're better equipped. And what we're trying to do now is to grow our, our revenues without growing our cost base. So we're very happy and our shareholders and our, our customers are very happy that we've been able to 
manage our cost base so effectively during the pandemic. So how do we grow and not grow our cost base at the same rate? And that's where RPA and automation plays an absolutely key role. So in its simplest terms, when I chat to, to Derek, who's the group CFO, the conversations we're having are, how do we absorb the additional demand without reintroducing these costs? How do we, how do we give our people more time? Um, and, and that led us directly into how we use um, RPA to do that. In terms of our vision, therefore, um, if there are three pieces to enabling this, one is talent, so we invest in our people. The second one is simplify our processes and our applications and our structures. And the third one is then that automation piece. And so ultimately, what I'm trying to achieve in partnership with the CFOs, the presidents, et cetera, is that we can automate the vast majority of our low value activities, process steps, tasks that is currently undertaken by humans so that we can free up their time to work on more valuable activities. And, and that, in a nutshell, is the vision for RPA. Good. Thank you. Great, Adam. That was that was really interesting. You know, whenever I talk to you, we get more insights. Uh, I, uh, one of the critical uh, key questions I wanted to ask you was, as our audience and, and the webinar topic is intelligent automation and ERP, right? And I know you also have ERP systems, uh, your core ERP, and some other uh, business use uh, different ERPs. So can you identify, can you help the audience, right? Look at two or three use cases that you feel that automation can live uh, 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 in, in, in sync with your ERP ecosystem. And, yeah, uh, ab absolutely, Raman. Interestingly, the previous slides touched on them. Um, so hopefully I can make them a bit real. So the first example I think we found was the easiest one, which was around just journal postings and, and, and uh, sundry invoices. So financial processing, particularly around month end, where we have a core ERP, but we also have uh, instances in in tougher geographies like Brazil and stuff where we have a, a hosted structure on a different piece of on a different ERP platform, and so what was happening was we would have people log into in this case SAP B1, which is the hosted environment, uh, run a report to extract out um, an Excel file of journals, um, and then upload those into our core SAP environment. Um, and we don't just do that once, we do it multiple times. And so using RPA massively simplifies that. You know, the, the, and, and it, it's, it's kind of like a macro on steroids for those people with a finance background, um, but with error checking as well. So that's an easy example. Um, the next one is one that uh, we're, we're live with in part at the moment, which is around invoice automation. So we as a company, Malvern Panalytical, raise about 80,000 invoices a year. So, so not huge numbers, but, but still significant. Um, and what we've done is we, we have two use cases to solve here, but similar. One was there are country-specific requirements for e-invoicing. So I'm thinking Italy, Hungary, and, Hungary excuse me, and India. And then the other is where we're linking into things like Ariba or Tungsten or Chorus. And so what we've, we've built is uh, an RPA, a bot, that extracts the data from SAP generates the invoices into the format required by the receiving system, and typically the customer system, but sometimes a, a governmental tax system, um, and then logs in and posts it into the portal. So we're, we're live on a couple of those already, um, and we're, we're really pleased with, with the progress we're making and, and the ease with which we're able to do this, um, especially with the support of JKT. Um, in terms of a third example, this is the most complex one that we've taken on, and I'm sort of giving you them deliberately in order of increasing complexity. Um, this is our sales order entry process. So when, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, um, when we receive a, an order, a sale, when a sale, an, an order comes in, we actually have established that we do about 70 manual checks on the order, um, and that that's taking about a quarter of our order entry team's time. We have quite a significant order entry team, um, and they're pretty frustrated by this because it's slowing down their ability to process orders, and it's not, it's these are low value activities. 
Um, so we're actually uh, working now into how we use RPA to to do a bunch of this checking and rekeying that was going on. And it's typically, you know, we have we have a, a the two ERPs I reference. We have Salesforce. Good integration between them, but it still leads to some issues. So we're using RPA to to smooth out those issues, and, and we're hoping to make a fantastic saving in in our people's time. So those would be the three I'd call out, Ron. Thank you, thank you, Adam, for that. Good. That's uh, that. That's good, and this is uh, yeah. This is what we can see from a general perspective. Uh, and I like also the idea about uh, to see an AP clerk uh, under steroid. I, I like this. I want to see this. But uh, yeah. So finally, you started your your RPA journey. Um, what advice could you share with uh, all the attendees about about this journey, and what should what what you noticed, what could be avoided, maybe? Yeah, I, I advise. I, I'll share four learnings, if I may. Um, the first one is choose the platform really carefully. Um, we looked at a bunch of different platforms. I think we Adam, we may have lost you at the real critical point. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you hear me again? We yes, can. Yeah. We can. Oh, I'm Absolutely. so sorry. Where, where did you lose me? <laughs> uh, choose the, the platform. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. My apologies. Technology. Hey, you'd think a CIO would know better. Um, what I was saying was <laughs> choose the platform really carefully. We spent a lot of time choosing automation anywhere. We looked at the, some of the other technologies in this space, and, and I'm glad we did because we've been very happy with the choice. Second thing is don't try and do it alone. We did for a while and wasted a bunch of time. Um, as soon as we brought JKT and things have significantly accelerated and we're seeing benefit realization literally you know, go from nothing to, to real benefits in a, in a matter of a, few, a month or two. So I really recommend and we're, we're, I, I'm happy to say we're very comfortable with JKT. Um, the third thing is it can't do everything. Um, as we're going through our use cases, we are finding use cases that it just doesn't work for. However, we are also finding other solutions. So the, the actual act of forcing your organization to look at their processes actually is driving solutions beyond the capabilities of RPA in terms of other system enhancements or changes to ways of working. Um, and the fourth one, I would say, is we've been very careful to talk about how automation enables our employees to focus on higher value activities. We were very worried that if it was perceived as a, a kind of a blunt tool to take employees out of the business, that we wouldn't get the creative energy that we needed from our teams. So we've been very, very careful to approach it that way. So those would be my four. Okay, good, thanks. Great, Adam, as usual, right? Uh, great to hear from you and your ins inspiring and insightful knowledge. Specifically, some of my key takeaways, right? Where do more with less. It's not just about. It's about you know putting your you know manual intervention and doing employees doing more productive work, right? So thank you again. Thanks for your time. Uh, Adam is very difficult to get hold of uh, for people in the audience. So we've been very fortunate to uh, uh, to have him for this webinar. Uh, you know, I just want to uh, 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 just uh, for people participating in the webinar, uh, you know, we have explained uh, the journey, right? The client engagement journey. And for people who have taken up time for the webinar, we will we will follow up with a complimentary maturity pre-assessment survey uh, so that we can understand your current uh, status of intelligent automation, what stage you are and how we can start kickstart the journey, or if you are already in the journey, how we can accelerate it, right? Uh, so we will follow it up. <clears throat> now I will pass it on to uh, Monica and Clea for Q&A. Monica, over to you. Absolutely. Well, thank you. That was absolutely brilliant, Adam. You're you're an you're a natural. Your story is awesome, and uh, unfortunately, you have to be careful by doing a great job in front of a marketing person because um, <laughs> although Rom although Rom says you're, you're hard to get a hold of, we have our ways. So, <laughs> so look, um, all of you, Cyril, Rom, Adam, thank you. We we do have some Q and A coming in at the moment, and we've got a couple of extra minutes. I think the first one is uh, for you, Adam, and um, that is coming from 
how will you select new automation use cases into the future? I, I love the example you gave that it, it doesn't fix everything, but it also does help find new opportunities to fix things. But what, what's kind of the future look like in terms of identifying new use cases once you get through phase one? Yeah, so great question. Can you hear me okay? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, it's a great question. Um, we've discovered that as we've progressed on this journey, there is a tremendous appetite within Marvin Panalytical um, to, to get things automated. And we're, we're getting people contacting us at the moment. So if people have kind of got that, oh, if, if, if something isn't working very well, talk to the RPA team. So it started off slowly. But once we had a couple of successes, with the, the early successes which we've built on, we're now finding there's quite a pull. The other thing, of course, is I talk about it a lot. So I share with people, you know, what we're doing at, at pretty much any opportunity. So, so I think there's quite good awareness within the business that we have this capability and that it's, it's everyone's so busy in COVID land, right? You know, the, uh, the, it, it's whether it's back to back meetings or, or, or kind of working on the shop floor and, and, and things return to normal in, in many parts of the world. It just feels such a busy time. So when people hear there's a way to give some, to get some time back, they, it seems to have to create a real pull. Absolutely. And, and, and very, very well said. I think uh, at the start of it all, what was the, the funny saying that was going around? We're not uh, working from home, we're living at work. So I, I hear you loud and clear. Yeah. <laughs> awesome answer. Thank you. I think the next one coming in probably, I, I, actually, I'm going to direct this to Cyril. Um, it's, are there any limits regarding the volume of data uh, when you're comparing things like RPA and APIs, etc.? I'm, 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 Really not quite sure. I'm, I'm going to assume you, you know how to decode that one, Cyril. Well, the, the purpose of RPA is to reproduce uh, human, okay, human task yeah. and uh, what they are doing. So finally, there is no limit, okay? So that, yeah. that's a, just a question of technology. But yeah, RPA, what, what a human can do, RPA can do. So finally, now you can, you can deliver as a human. So now okay. there is no limit in terms of volume. Okay, no limit at all. Just uh, and 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 the beauty the beauty is that bots don't take weekends; they don't take holidays, right? So uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I but but we mustn't forget because I think Adam was very very intentionally um, uh, deliberate about what he said. Was look, it's not about applying. Oh, find, you've hired people for their creative brains and their capabilities. You want to use them accordingly. So I, I hear you loud and clear. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. So, gentlemen, I want to thank you. I, I don't see any other questions coming through, um, which which uh, which is uh, maybe good. Oh, wait, maybe we may have one more here. Um, nope, nope, we're, we are good. Um, on behalf of Automation Anywhere, on behalf of JK Tech, and on behalf of Adam and Spectrus and Melbourne Panalytical, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to be with us today. Uh, hopefully, you've learned a little bit more about automation. You've learned a little bit more about the implementation capabilities and frameworks. And more importantly, you know, being in the driver's seat like Adam, learning from folks who are who are doing this real time and and um, being able to see see this out and and strategically deliver this to their organization. Thank you to our presenters. You were awesome. Um, I, I love great presentations, great materials. You all were beautiful. So have a very, very uh, big, tall glass of something cold and a long straw tonight. And uh, we will see you in future future sessions. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.